Hello again everyone, welcome back to this series on how to dry iconic images. Well the one I'm drawing today is of Frida Kahlo, a very famous Mexican painter, famous for her self-portraits. And the self-portrait I'm doing just now is one called self-portrait with necklace or thorn necklace and hummingbird. Now the shape of her head, her face, is this kind of oval shape with a fairly square chin. On top of that, you go up to the top here and there's quite a large hairstyle above that. This comes up and down at a point like that, and then round down the side of her head down to her ears, which come in about here. Like that, and the ear coming in about here. Eyes are on this line here, fairly heavy looted, and of course above them you have the famous eyebrows. Very heavy, not quite meeting in the middle, but almost. Like that. And these lines coming in down the side of the nose here. The eyes, as I said, very heavy lidded one, curved like that, with the lid above it. The other one coming in here. And then the bottom of the eye coming in over there. And the pupil there. This other one's slightly more open, almost as drooping slightly down there. So we see a bit of white round pupil of the eye there. Like that. But as if she's looking out from underneath her eyelids like that. And we carry it into the nose. Like that. Slightly flared nostrils. And then this indentation on her top lip. And quite a full mouth. There's a bow shape here. And then the actual shape of her neck coming down and quite sloping shoulders, quite uh, steeply sloping like that. And then the necklace, starting here, the tendrils of the, the thorns coming around like that, one sticking up there. And tied to the top one, we have the hummingbird coming in about here. This tail, its wings. Okay. And then all the twisted tendrils of the thorn bush coming around like this. And of course, because she was also famous for very personal portraits which really spoke about her own suffering. In this particular one, the thorns are actually pressing into her neck, so you get a little of blood coming down there. It'll come up here like that. There's another one twisting around here. This one coming around the back, and something coming around like that. This one coming underneath and coming around and across here. And jagged twigs all twisting around her neck. Like that. Another one come in behind here, going up, and a bit coming down, like that. This part going up, and doubling up, join that bit there, and let's see, yes, the actual collar of her 
dress or costume that's coming around like that. This bit coming out here. Joining up to a bit that comes around from here. And kind of twists and becomes broken there. And this bit comes up underneath it. And that comes up over the end here. And let's see, there's another bit comes in behind here. That comes down to there, comes over there. There's another one that comes in from here. Twist around beneath the hummingbird, it comes across. It's got a jagged point here. Another one going behind the bird there. Okay. Right, I think, the, the, well, before I do that, I actually go up to the top again and put in the decorations she had at the top of her hairstyle here. And what we have are two butterfly shapes. There's antenna coming out here. And the other one come in about here. And this wing more kind of pointed down like that. And the curved bottom wing. And the antenna. And at the top she also has what looks like braided cord coming around like that. And I'll put that in more detail when I'm using the pen. The other side comes in around here like that. Comes around the side of her hair there. And then of course there's a few more details for her ears. Right, let's get the pen. Okay, we'll start up here with these braided shapes. Using a slightly wiggly line there to suggest the kind of quality of the cord. Like that. And then, of course, the butterflies. It's a kind of jeweled shape she have here in her hair. And uh, this come also in here. And the other butterfly here. Like that. And the curve of the bottom wing. And these curves along the top. Again, the embraided cords. Like that. And underneath here, there's some more decoration, which looks a bit like this. And then down the side of her head, and you can use this slightly jagged line, and also at the front here with the parting, and it's jagged because you can imagine the hair being swept back like that. So a few lines like that, I'll be filling this in later with black. That's why I don't want a solid line. down here, and then out here, slightly uneven shape coming down, but following that general shape. Then we want to add eyebrows, again use this jagged line, 
thicker at the end here. And these uh, couple of lines in here suggest the top of the nose. And then the eyes. Heavier line at the top here. And then the eyelid. And the bottom part of the eye, a bit finer, a bit more curved, coming up. And also indication of her eyelashes on the bottom there. Like that. Now, this spiegel coming in here. And what you can do is do a curved shape, dark curved shape, and leave that bit there, which is the highlight. And as I said, don't go down to the bottom of that line there, leave a little space. Again, half curve like that. Okay, and we're moving down now to the bottom of the nose. And this little indentation on her top lip. And the mouth itself, as I said, got a full mouth. Going down like that. Trying to be delicate with these lines here, not too heavy. And the beard is straight along the bottom, coming back up again, like that, okay. Now the ears, and a curve coming around like that, around underneath, and then up to the top and round. You can leave that space there. And this one coming around here. Curve like that, and space there. Okay, now the side of our head. And down there. Down to, as I say, this fairly straight chin here. Take curve of the cheekbone there, come in, follow that line down there. Okay, now down to her neck. And this is where we start to put in the uh, tendrils of the thorns coming in. These twisted tendrils coming around her neck there. That comes around there. This one starts here and comes around. There's a thorn there. And then the knot which holds the or whatever it is, a cord for the hummingbird, like that. Which tied to that, coming up here. And the end of that would come in there. And then you have another, well this one comes over here twist round like that and there's another one coming out from underneath coming along here joins to one coming down there this one goes behind there with another thorn there coming up one behind this one 
and this joins itself around there. And the hummingbird attached here. This tail coming in there and its wings coming in there. Like that. I can move up to this part now. That carves around and comes in here. Twist round underneath this one, which has come down from here. Like that. And this carries on underneath. There's another thorn here. Twists up underneath this one, which comes round from the back. There. And another one appears in here. And it comes up over the top. And it comes down there. Actually, this one is not part of that. That's right. And the slope of her shoulder coming in there. And the curve of her dress coming in like that. And the shoulder coming in there. And to finish off the, oh yeah, coming down there. Finish off the thorns coming this side. And this one finally coming across there. And this one curving underneath. It looks fairly complicated, but actually if I, when you follow the, the logic of the strands of, the, of these twigs, it's actually not too bad. It all makes sense, you know. <laughs> and uh, this curves around here. Underneath appears there. Another one coming in there, and then finally this one with its ends there, like that. Okay, right, well what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get um, a pen and I'm going to fill in this uh, part and also her eyebrows, okay, because they're pretty black in the portrait. Okay, well, I'll try to take a pen now. So I'm going to start to shade in all around here. Right down the side. And another shade coming in there. And as I said, remember, you have your broken line there, so that makes it a bit more like hair. You know, the parted hairstyle there coming up around here. Okay, so let's take a couple of minutes to do this, and I'll do that and catch you when I finish. Okay, I'm just finishing off now. Into there. And I can move on to the eyebrows now. Like that. Quite dramatic. Okay. What I want to do now is I'm going to get a pencil and put in some kind of mid-tones. Okay, the mid-tones I want to use are the ones in the eye here. So leave that white highlight there, but come around there, the kind of middle tone. Okay, and also a little bit of shading on the upper lip here. Like that, just there. Not too much. And then also in these pieces, the ears. There, like that. A little bit here. 
give that sense of the nose at the top. And a little shading on the top lids there. And maybe a little bit of shading of the mouth. Get the fullness and a little bit underneath here, like that. Okay. A bit here as well. And under the chin. A bit of shading. And perhaps on the hummingbird as well. Draw some lines coming down this way. Like that. And also underneath some of these uh, tendrils coming around here. Like that. And you could again accentuate the little drops of blood that are on the neck there. And up here again underneath possibly the Chord shapes, there's going to be a bit of shape there, like that. A bit of three dimensionality there. Okay, well, there we have Frida Kahlo, and uh, as you can see, it's quite a dramatic image. I hope you enjoyed that, I hope you can join me again. But in the meantime, of course, all the best and happy drawing. <laughs>